Hi, I'm Malcolm Roberts and I'm a Senator for Queensland and Australia and I'm with Ken Jury, an investigative journalist and we're in Goolwa where Ken lives and what you can see behind me is water from the Hume and Dartmouth dams coming down the Murray and flowing into the ocean while farmers can't tap it. Can you tell us what else is significant, Ken? Well, what's significant down here, of course, is that if we run out of water in this system in the lower lakes, what, we, what will happen is we'll expose the acidic soils that uh, the lakes sit on. And uh, those, uh, those lakes, in fact, it's been estimated, have something like 500 million tonnes of acid soils underneath. And uh, during the millennium drought, of course, we saw mobilisation of sulfuric acid. And um, the, the issue is that uh, during the drought, what happens is the water level drops if the Murray stops flowing in the millennium drought. Now what Ken says is that if we return this lake to its natural state, which is ocean water, estuarine, then you can protect that forever. We can, yes. In fact, it, it was a, an estuary before. The lower lakes were definitely estuarine and that argument has just been settled. <laughs> and uh, for now, uh, what we need to do is to get another lock built immediately, lock zero, so that Up we can- near Murray Bridge? Yes, up near, well, to, uh, not quite, uh, just a little bit above Wellington, uh, which is just at the top of Lake Alexandrina. And by doing that, we're protecting Adelaide's water supply, which is most important. We can then allow the ocean to come in down here. We have to do a little bit of modification with the barrages and we need to get rid of Bird Island, which is down near the mouth of the river, which is actually blocking that whole system through the Mar Mundu Channel. Once we've done all that, we can then let the ocean in uh, to mix with fresh water. Instead of using about four and a half thousand gigalitres a year of water in that uh, those lower lakes, we'll only need about 1800 gigalitres. The rest, which are 2700, we can give back to the growers upstream. So then if we have that 1800 behind lock zero, we can trickle feed that into the lower lakes then to mix as an estuary and certainly the wind, and it's a very windy area down here, will see to the stratification and mix that water properly. And when we need to clean it out, the lower lakes out and the Goolwa Channel, all we need to do is reduce the level, the surface level of the 840 square kilometre lakes and channel by a meagre 20 centimetres. That will give us 150 gigalitres of water to be put forced through these barrages and that will clear the Murray mouth like it's never been cleared before except for one time and that was in 1956 with the big flood. So you can see this fella has done a lot of research and, and he's talked to a lot of people and listened to a lot of people right around the Murray-Darling Basin, especially scientists. He thinks like an engineer and communicates like a journalist, very, very effective. But he's really asking me, he just asked me in the cafe up at Goolwa, to make sure that we persist until we get this restored for the health and safety of the people of Goolwa, just in case there's another long drought. And, and also to restore the environment to its natural estuarine state because that is, is the, the root cause of the problems down here in environmental, environmental problems are the fact that na man has built these barrages and converted it to fresh water. And that's the problem with the bloody Coorong. Yeah, and, and just adding to that, Malcolm, and, and you're quite right in everything you said there, the, the fact of the matter is climate change has caught up with us. We're no longer getting the rainfall across the catchments, which means we have less water for the growers the growers are moving off the land in droves. Please, we must stop that. And the only way to do that is to save that water from going into the lower lakes and waste, save it by bringing the ocean back in. Well, we know, I'm gonna take issue with Ken on that, that part of it because the climate change is just natural climate variability, just a natural cycle. The temperatures now are cooler than they were in the 1880s and 1890s. The rainfall patterns have not changed. There's just natural cycles of drought and flood, drought and flood in Australia, as Dorothy McKellar said. So climate variability, not climate change, and it's entirely natural. But we have, we must, as Ken said, that natural climate variability is something we have to manage. And the word for managing climate variability and rainfall variability is dams and it's also honesty and integrity with regard to the science because here's where the bloody water is that we couldn't find mm. in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. It's sitting in this bloody lake. Yes, in the meantime the growers are watching it go past their properties back up there yep. and with great dismay they're selling up or they're moving off completely. That's sad. 
Thank you very much, Ken, and we will reassure you that we will do everything we can to cut out the bullshit in this system and get back to the truth. Malcolm, thanks very much. Much appreciated, Thank Senator. You.